In this video, we're going to revisit the action tool, the 3D compositing tool, and we're going to create a lens flare and use it as a lighting effect. And then we'll add a couple more tools to finish off our comp. So I'll go down to my effects nodes once again and drag a new action tool up into the schematic. I will immediately hit the tilde key to step into the action tool. And again, as we know, we already have a camera. I'll hit the P key over my bin and you'll see a tool called presets. Double click on it and it will open up the preset dialog box. The first presets that you see are the particles. Looking down in the lower left corner, you'll see a flyout and you see it reads particles right now. You have particles, 3D text, and lens flares. We're going to use the lens flares, but let's take a quick look at some of the particle presets and the 3D text presets. With particles chosen from the flyout, click the scan subdirectory button, then come up to the left corner and click on proxies to reveal all the proxies of the different particle effects that come with flame by default. Now go to our preset flyout and choose 3D text. And now you can see all the different 3D text presets that come with flame. And lastly, let's switch over to lens flare. Lens flare has a couple subfolders, but just clicking on scan subdirectories will allow us to see all of them that are available to you. I'm going to turn my proxies to be tiles so I can see the list or name of the lens flares. The one I want to choose is realistic lens flare slash spheric 32 cook pan code D. So select that and choose load. Now in your schematic, take your navigator and move over. This is what has been built for you in the preset. Every part of the lens flare has different controls you can use to manipulate it from the very top of the light that it is applied to, to each individual element that makes up the lens flare. Selecting the light once again in the viewport, I can grab it and start moving it around. And you can see this is a true 3D lens flare. You can also grab the green manipulator and move that around inside 3D space. All of these parameters are keyframable also. You can also hide different elements of the lens flare if you don't want to use it or change them. For instance, this iris part one is this magenta highlight that's happening there, and I don't want that to be part of this. So with that selected, I just hit the H key and it's no longer seen. Also, if there's an entire part of the lens flare you don't want to use, you can just detach it. This part right here is this little highlight that we see down there, and I don't want to use that. So I'm just going to click and drag across the line to break its connection. In fact, I can hold the Alt key, pick up all these pieces, and just throw them away. I'll select the light once again. What I want to have happen is animate this lens flare to not be visible through the first 15 to 20 frames. And then I want it to slowly come into the scene and then fade back out. So I'm going to zoom back a little bit in this viewport, turn on auto key. I'll grab my manipulator and drag it off the frame at the first frame. I'll move forward to about the 18th frame and I'll adjust it one more time to set a keyframe for all those values. Then I'll go over to about the 27th frame. I'm going to pull this back in just like that. I'll move forward a couple frames, maybe to the 32nd frame. And again, I'll just make a slight adjustment, creating some keyframes. And then I'll go to the last frame and I'll pull it so it's totally off the frame again. So as I scrub through here, you can see it's a very slight movement that's going to be happening. I also want to change the intensity of the light. So with the light still selected, and I can see it in the frame, I'm going to take the intensity down a little bit, somewhere around 65. Now back in our schematic viewport for action, I'll hit the escape key to go back to our batch schematic. And I'll take my action node, and I want to composite it over the end result of the core warper, which is our blue tint. So once again, I go to my nodes, I get a comp node, I drag it into the scene. I'm going to zoom in and pan over. I'll feed the end result of our action tool into the main input for the front. I'll take the end result for our color warper and feed that in the back input. I'll double click on my comp node and switch this to be an add. Now the coloring is not right and I could go back into my action tool and start to manipulate all the different pieces of the lens flare. But instead of doing that, let's just go and add a color correction after the action tool. So once again, I hit the C key. I'll take a color warper, hold the shift key down as I drag over the connection line and release it. I'll go to my comp node, right click and just choose set as next available context. So it sets it as context three. I'll activate this viewport Hold the shift key and hit the three key. Now I'll double click over the color warper and we'll just take the saturation down to about 0.300.
Now I want to blur that a little bit, so we'll go back to our nodes, get the blur tool, and I'll hold the shift key, add that into there, double click on that. Looking at my context point, I can now come in here and start to blur the color corrected lens flare. I'll go back to our first frame now. The last thing I want to add is one more matchbox tool. So I'm going to go right to my matchbox, hit the C key. I want to add a chromatic aberration. So I'll drag that into the scene, hold the option, shift key, feed my input into there, double click on this. I'll set my effect to be five and my samples to be 65. And there's our end result. If we want to organize some of these nodes, we can do so by adding more compasses to keep things nice and tidy or neat. For example, maybe I want to create a compass for this effect that we did as far as the light wrap and the blur. So I'll hit the C key to get my draw compass tool. I'll drag a box around this and I'll just name this light wrap. And now I can move that around if I want. I can organize my nodes further. I can hit the C key again. And then with the draw compass tools, I can region select these and call this blur and change the color of this one to be a green. I'll hit the M key to go back to my select tool. Just wanna to elaborate a little bit more on the compass tool. So obviously we know we can now move this around and all the nodes inside of it are going to move with it. But you can still go and select each node individually in between. And if I take a tool such as this and drag it inside, it now becomes part of that compass. So if I want to take this blur and add it in here, I can do so. And then I can organize the nodes as I want them to be inside of here. There's also a couple hotkeys I'd like to mention as far as navigating and viewing things in the schematic. With this compass selected, if I hold the space bar and I hit the F key, it will focus on that compass. If I hold the space bar and hit the A key, I will zoom out to view all of my nodes. This hotkey works with anything that is selected, not just a compass. So if I hold down the control key and I select these tools right here and hit space bar F, I'm going to zoom into those nodes because they were selected. And then again, space bar A, I zoom back out to see all of my nodes. In the next video, we're going to look at how we can render this back to our desktop, our batch reels, and then also render it out of flame as a QuickTime file.